Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another show and for another episode of our tactical breakdown series in which we look at the players that Arsenal could, should and hopefully will be signing this summer. Today is July 1st, that miracle day in which we believe that the signings will start to happen because lo and behold, the Arsenal kit is now available. The launch is taking place and hopefully that means that Arsenal are allowed to put some of those players they've supposedly signed in that new red and white kit and so therefore can start announcing them fingers crossed anyway but a player in which we could be looking to sign a lot sooner than well any of us may have even thought this one's come out of complete left field but actually is looking to have quite a bit of interest and actual substance to it it's very interesting recent reports coming out linking us with this player but before i go into the video just as always thank you ever so much for listening thank you for liking thank you for subscribing please do if you haven't already and the comments in the comment section have always been positive Positive and brilliant and tacticals uh, the tactical breakdown in particular of, of some of you guys has been amazing so please keep those comments up and if you'd like to keep watching these videos you can by clicking that little bell it tells you whenever a new show has just dropped and that's why some of the people watching this video right away got told about it so don't miss out on one and I should say we did our second season preview uh, with my good friend Kenny Ken yesterday which you can go check out which is our second one the first one was with Lee Judges which is still available please go check both of them out where they both gave their thoughts on the upcoming season and we will try to continue that each week as we lead up to that first game against Newcastle. But let's get right into the video we want to talk about today and talk about the guy that we're linked to, which is Yassine Brahimi, the Algerian winger for Porto. Now, if you'd have said at the start of the summer that someone like Yassine Brahimi would be available on a free, I would have been like, snap this guy up. He is absolutely brilliant. Why wouldn't you not go out there and get him? Now, we're going to break into all the statistics and the facts and find out whether I was slightly off the mark or whether actually my thoughts are very well-founded, it seems. So, let's talk about him then. Well, he's 29 years old, which is always something that's going to turn a lot of people off. Turns 30 in February. Do we want another uh, old head on our books like uh, Ozil we've already got? We've got a lot of defenders that are quite old now. Bama Young's turning 30. All these guys are quite old. Do we need to bring in someone who's a lot younger? Or is it worth it seeing the fact that he's absolutely free? It would only cost a signing on fee and obviously the wages that he demands as well. He scored 13 goals and 9 assists in 49 games for Porto last season across all competitions, which is a decent return. Um, but maybe you'd expect a little bit more. But again, he is playing in one of those wide positions. As you can see from the heat map on your screen now, he is very much leaning towards that left-hand side. He's a right-footed player. He likes to cut inside. And you're going to hear a little bit about that in a minute. And I say in a minute because you're going to hear about it right now. Now, I've gone out and got one of my correspondents, uh, one of my good friends from Portugal. Met this guy, Jose Miguel, when uh, I was in uh, Lisbon on holiday. And he offered to show me around the place. And honestly, he was one of the nicest people uh, I've ever met. Really humble, uh, really, really nice guy. And he knows his football. He's a sporting fan, but don't let me get that wrong. He knows his Portuguese football all over. I'm going to leave a link in the description to his Outside of the Boot account, which gives a, a record of loads of uh, his different articles he's wrote. But he's massively criminally underfollowed on Twitter, probably because he's only just started it. I mean, he has two followers, which is me and someone else. So let's go give him a bit of backing to try and start up his Twitter account. Uh, so go follow that. But he's brilliant in terms of his Portuguese knowledge and you're going to hear from him right now giving his thoughts on Yassine Brahimi and what he thinks about the Algerian winger. Hey there, Arsenal fans. I want to talk to you about the imminent signing of Yassine Brahimi. Well, Brahimi is a tremendous player. He's a typical right-footed left winger with some outstanding dribbling skills, a good deal of pace and most of all, a perfect shooting ability that drives every defender and goalkeeper nuts. He's especially famous for his technical capacity and from what I can see in the Arsenal squad for this season, Brahimi may just be the virtuoso the Gunners need. With a big question mark around the whole Ozil business, Brahimi may just take over the German's creative part in the team's play, although they play in different positions. But Brahimi bears some flaws as well. In Portugal, and even though every single football fan here recognizes his unquestionable value, he is known for being a rather unstable player, performing greatly in some periods of the season, but then disappearing in some matches. Do you think a player this good would always be in the starting eleven of a team like Porto? But that was not the case. In several matches, he didn't even make it in the starting eleven due to this irregularity in his performances. Well, to sum up, I do believe Brahimi will be a tremendous asset in this Arsenal squad and certainly has the skills to charm his way into the fans' hearts. But he sure needs a coach that can get the best out of him. Thank you and have a great season. 
So that was Jose's thoughts there. Obviously, he really, really knows his stuff in terms of Portuguese football, and he exactly showed that in that video. I think he spoke very well about the guy being a technical player. The fact he knows that he's going to provide us that extra bit of creativity that we will, in fact, need if we are going to be pushing forward to try and relieve some of the burden that has supposedly, uh, supposedly been carried by the likes of Mesut Ozil. We definitely are crying out for some more creativity in that team, and we desperately need some. And so Brahimi maybe could be the guy to come in and bring us that. Now, let's get into the meat and gravy of this video, which is always going to be about the statistics and talk about Yassine Brahimi. Now, I wanted to compare him to a player that we've been linked to, and a couple of people in actually the, the comment section suggested we look at Brahimi in comparison to the other player that is going to be costing a hell of a lot more than a free agent, and that is, of course, Wilfred Zaha. Wilfred Zaha had been linked to 80 million odd pounds signing, but how close can a free signing in Yassine Brahimi stack up against the Ivorian? Well, if we look at his dribbling, first of all, because that is what Yassine Brahimi is known most for, his dribbling. 73.3% success rate, which is higher than Zaha for his dribbles. 59% of his offensive duels are won, which is higher than Zaha. 3.65 progresses runs made every game, which again is higher than Zaha. Now, there's plenty of other stats that you can see on your screen there, but the main things about the fact is dribbling is more successful, his offensive duels are more successful, and he's making more progressive runs than what Zaha is, is a really positive sign. Now, I know there is the caveat that you can say that Liga Nosh is not anywhere near as competitive as the Premier League, and don't get me wrong, I would agree with you on that. But eventually, and you've got to think about it this way, he is a more introverted player. He likes being on the ball. He likes taking the ball, driving forward with it, cutting inside, receiving the ball from other players. And you can see that in his game. Now, if he's going to translate that to the Premier League, I think he's got all the tools to be able to do that. The fact that he is beating Zaha in these areas is positive because it means when you would likely see a slight dip coming into a more competitive league, the fact that he's already ahead of someone like Zaha, costing 80 odd million more than he would, is a really positive sign. We look at his passing then. 80, uh, over 80% 80 in terms of his pass accuracy, which is higher than Zaha. His crossing, only 28%, which is less than Zaha. But his long passing is actually higher than Zaha at 68%. And then you've got his forward and backward passes. Now, with his forward and backward passes, you can see on the screen there, way more forward passes than he does going backwards. He's very much wanting to drag the play forwards. He doesn't want to recycle the play as much. Whereas if you look at Zaha's forward and backward passes, they're very even. Okay, So you've got that additional attacking quality that desire to get the ball up the pitch which I like in a player and you can clearly see that in Yassine Brahimi's stats. If we then go on to his defending because it's important to look at a, a winger and see how he would cover the defence so his uh, defensive duels one is unfortunately less than Zaha's because Zaha does a hell of a lot of running. Uh, he does more. He does intercept the ball more than Zaha though you can see on the screen there. He does lose the ball less than Zaha does as well and he recovers the ball more and he clears the ball more than what Zaha does as you can see from the statistics on your screen and I think it's very plain to see that he's a very very versatile player across that left hand side but as Jose said he's slightly inconsistent he doesn't always show what he can do in every single game in which you could argue Wilfred Zaha does and he is more consistent which is why his xg is higher and his xa is higher because he shows it on a more consistent basis but we don't need this to be the signing that's going to come in and change our wing play. If we're signing him on a free, you're looking at a sign-on fee that is nowhere near the amount you pay a club to sign someone and pay them a signing-on fee as well. It's just not the same. And so there's no reason why we can't bring in this extra creativity and bring in a younger player that can play on the wing, like the Claude Maurice-esque. I'm not saying him because it's seemingly he's off to Germany. But that young talent that we can bring through. But we've already got the likes of Amici. We've got the likes of Nelson. We've got the likes of Saka that are going to be coming through and maybe bringing in like someone like Brahimi in a season where our money should be really focused on the defence is actually a blessing in disguise because it gives an opportunity for our youngsters still not to be put off by the signing of a, of a world-class mid-twenties winger when actually we're bringing in a 29-year-old who's coming towards the end of it. He's got three good seasons, three, four good seasons left in his game at the, top of the, uh, at the top of his game and he could come in and really show that little bit of extra desire and creativity and want to win in another league and then still not put a barrier in the way to those youngsters who still have a massive chance when Brahimi obviously does go over 30 a little bit longer and does start to trail off and those youngsters can then push through. I think it makes a lot of sense as a signing to bring your senior Brahimi in. If we were to sign him, would it light up my world? No, it's a free signing of a 29-year-old from Porto who's shown inconsistencies across his seasons. But I think if you're going to see someone for that quality going for free, who usually costs you probably between 15 and 20 million if we were going to sign him, 
I think it's really, really good business. We're in the market for these type of players. We need to save money where we can and focus our money on the defence, bringing in the likes of Kieran Tierney, bringing in William Salaber and probably an additional defensive backup as well and hopefully maybe even a midfielder. Who knows, fingers crossed. But I think this signing makes a lot of sense for logistically. I think it makes a lot of signing, uh, signing sense of his uh, technical ability as well. But that's just my thoughts. Tell me what you think in the comments section below. Do you think this is the type of signing that you'd be excited about? Is it the type of signing that makes sense for you? Or do you think we should be pushing to actually spend money on a more established winger who's in their mid-20s rather than pushing 30. I can understand why you might think that, but have a consideration about the block to the youngsters and maybe this actually makes a lot of sense in terms of that. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please slap a like on it. Please subscribe if you're new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss a show. And we'll be back again tomorrow for either another tactical breakdown or a raw reaction show, maybe on a new signing. Who knows? We'll see you then. And as always, up the Arsenal.